I'm good. Microphone. Check. We are live. Hey, good morning. It's 5 a.m. Master Scrum. Hope oh, everybody's having a good day. It's Saturday. It's Labor Day weekend. Probably all think you're nuts. Eh, I'm up. Actually, we talked the other day about, and here we talk about, oh, be, oh by the way, don't forget to like and subscribe. 5 a.m. Master Scrum. And we talk about Agile Scrum and just business stuff, A IT, at IT. And I hope you're sharing. And then we're growing every day a little bit by a little bit. Little tiny thing, which is kind of what we want. And uh, this is not market to kids, but kids can use it and learn how to do it. I hear they teach Scrum to kids in school, elementary schools over in Europe somewhere sometimes. But um, it's funny, we talked about cadence the other day. And um, apparently I'm naturally waking up at 4.30 in the morning every day. So I think it's funny. I got myself in such a cadence and getting up at 5 a.m. You know, do the 5 a.m. Mr. Scrum. But I'm just naturally waking up at 4.30 every day now. I didn't even have my alarm. I was like, what time is my alarm set up? Set for 6.30. Uh, but I just thought it was funny. So I've been just, and then we started at probably around 5.30 this morning. I was just reading some people's posts on LinkedIn and just looking at some stuff, reflecting on what was going on the other day. One of the posts was talking about Junior Scrum Masters, and uh, I commented on his post, and I had a uh, – I had put a playbook together. Usually every time I go to a new gig or activity, I end up putting the playbook together on how to do things, what's, what would be beneficial for that organization. A lot of times they come in, they, they oh, yeah, we're scrum, we're agile. They are whatever they are. And most of the time, no, they're not. I don't know who their agile coach was or what they had taught them. And I usually put together a playbook. And when I, when I learned this, one of my jobs about making these playbooks, what people need to know, how to do this kind of thing. And the last job that I did, I was just looking at the numbers before we came on. It was like 149 pages long in a PowerPoint documentation. And uh, there's still more to go because I usually take the system, whether it be Rally, Jira, VSTS, whatever it is, and I – lay in the playbook the flows like as work flows through the work what does that mean what are the inputs what are the outputs what processes are going on during that phase and and kind of lay that out too because you know you get millions of questions well what is what does in process mean what is in testing mean what is this what is this bucket for um you know a waiting test or a waiting development or or Open. What does open mean? That's my favorite one. What's open mean? You just created a story. <laughs> it means open. But anyway, do that for, for what I do. So it's 149 pages long, which may sound like a lot, but I'll be honest with you. I just scratched the surface of what this Agile and Scrum and what Scrum Masters can use. And that's why when people say you're doing this daily content, I want you know, why don't you do it once a week? Just, there's so much content out there to share with people and everybody's at different levels and some people know things, some people know more. So try to go back and forth at different levels of understanding and, and uh, here's all the, saw the one video, his son was like, oh, his hair. I'm like, yeah, we used to have that much hair. I don't have any anymore, but I had hair at one point when I was young. I was a little baby too. But uh, anyway, sorry about that. It's Saturday. It's the weekend. You know, this is live. Look crazy, but um, there's so many nuances to Agile and Scrum and this. And you know, I, I went to one gig. The guy was telling me, "I need you to, you need, I need you to tell all the Scrum Masters everything they need to do to be a Scrum Master." I'm like, "You want how many books do you want?" I mean, I got I don't know how many books? I I have a graphic on one of my blog posts, like twenty or thirty books. And that still doesn't scratch the surface, right? So we could talk Agile Scrum forever. I mean, 15 minutes, easily do a year, two years worth of stuff. Right now we're on show number 40. And that show 40, I am going to break down over this weekend. So we might get lots of pings if you hit the bell um, of just little snippets of stuff that you can use train your people with, take back, share, comment. I'm going to put on LinkedIn. We, I set up an Instagram account 
4 or 5 a.m. Master Scrum yesterday. So I got that. I started it. I got to set it up, put information in it. But just get some of the major houses of social media out there. Just to share information <laughs> while we're doing it. Um, but it was just funny. I just read that. And I did get a compliment. I've been getting compliments like, I wish we had this playbook a year ago, right? <laughs> it would have been nice because the way I break it down. Actually, each each ceremony in Scrum is like a play, like a play in a like a football playbook or a baseball playbook. Here's here's the setup. Here's the everybody does this. This is the outcome goal. Here's the input. Here's how you get everything all set up. And then what all the players, the roles in the playbook are supposed to be doing during those events. So it was just, it was just interesting. I did get a compliment the other day. One of the front end uh, developers like you wrote all this stuff pretty good it's a lot I said did you read it all I'm like he's like no not yet I'm working on it there's a lot of material I said yeah I know this is what we do right I think I think people are shocked at uh how you know scrum is right like I said before and I think Jeff Sutherland says it too it's a very simple concept but it's very complex and has lots of nuances and how you actually implement such a simple complex, uh, simple solution or simple process. Uh, there's a lot to it, but if you do the basics, it's easy and it really does help the team work better. Uh, just look at all the things I got to do this weekend. I just got to pick one at a time and just get nice, good business value on it before I go do a bunch of other things. And I got to get up at 5 in the morning before everybody else wakes up to add to my my unplanned backlog when they wake up. Can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? So this is my window. No one's awake. I can do the show. I get stuff done. Two hours maybe. Two maybe max. Get stuff that I need to do before everybody adds on to my unplanned work. It's kind of like work every day, right? Get in there before everybody else. Get as much stuff that you really want to do before start people, your bosses, and everybody start piling on. Anyway, so here at 5 a.m. Master Scrum, and I hope you're liking and subscribing. We, uh, we'll talk about one. We talked about just in general setting it up. I'm going to talk about uh, refinement today. We did a show where I challenged everybody. I'm still debating whether I should put that as an ad or just promote it out on LinkedIn and stuff like a five minute sprint planning session, right? How do you get there? One of the things thought about this week and just another twist to it, right? There's so many twists on how you can do this stuff is, you know, giving an agenda to your team ahead of time so they can be prepared and give a better quality refinement session. And it doesn't take much. But how many product owners, BAs, or teams don't get the agenda for the refinement session ahead of time? Like if you had five stories that you wanted to talk or review or even a couple features, providing the list of those features to the team the day before the refinement session. And why do I say that? You know, everybody wants to go, oh, we didn't get all this interaction. I said, did you help anybody be prepared for the interaction? Or are you making them think right out of your brain and it's second one and give you an instant answer? A lot of people in the development world, like I was talking to one young lady who was a developer. She had this real serious look on her face. She was like, all right, really, I'm doing it. And I asked, what are you doing? I'm concentrating. <laughs> so she was thinking, right? So it's really funny. Some people are like, I want an instant answer. But a lot of developers to have a good answer want to think about it for a little bit. So what I propose is that you provide, I mean, it helps you be organized too. You have to be whoever's the product owner, BA, breaking these requirements down, these stories. You have to be prepared ahead of time too. You can't just roll into a meeting and say, here, give me, give me your thoughts and your complexities and your interactions and, and give me an estimate of size and do all this stuff, right? So what I'm saying is if you give them a list a day ahead of time, and I don't think that's really that much to ask for. I really don't. 
and, and I don't know why we're not there more often than not. You give them like five items. When the developers are going transition from one activity to another one, sometimes they like to take a break from coding and staring at the screen all day long, right? So they just finished coding. They wrote all their code. They did some testing, whatever. They automated tests. They're all, they're done, right? So they go, done my task. Boom. Yes. Finished, right? They like to take a walk, stretch. Most do. Some don't let them. But most people like to take a walk, stretch out, go to the bathroom, get some water, get some more coffee, whatever. Go out and enjoy the nice weather on a, if it's nice out, you know. Just stretch everything. Then they come back. If they had the list of items that you wanted them to talk about tomorrow, the day before, they can take a little bit of time and kind of read the question. If they really like what they do, I'm assuming they like what they do, and you're not forcing them to do stuff, right? I kind of assume they like it. Some don't. But you give them an opportunity, but if you don't ever give them the opportunity, they'll never get that chance to review it ahead of time, right? So we'll just give them the stuff to review. Whether they do or not is up to them, but at least you gave them the opportunity to do so. They can never say you didn't give them the opportunity to re review the material before the meeting, right? That That is your fault. Not theirs. That's your fault. So you eliminate that fault, pointing, the finger pointing back to you. So give them that list. Why they're in their break mode, they might want to go, okay, what are you a five year? Oh, I'm going to look at it because I'm going to type them anyhow. So it's in my best interest to find out what's in these five stories. I'm going to go read them. So they look at them. They might take a little, you know, five minutes or something. They might take five minutes of a story and just kind of read it. Okay. Okay. They might text you back the day before. Uh, I can't really visualize what this is. Do you have a picture or something that you're missing? Or do you, before we do the prime and stuff, I'm going to let you know, do you have the sample test data? Because I want to see what it is or kind of what it is. And, or maybe they might say, is this kind of like what we did the other day? I mean, it looks pretty simple or maybe it looks really complex. So, oh, by the way, I, uh, let me, let me go talk to my senior person and say, hey, you know, we're going through like five firewalls and the data's here and there's a little bit of that data there. And Or, hey, do you know they just created a whole new database, but we already have that data here and we just need to grab it rather than create a whole new system. You know, they can have those conversations, but you got to give it to them a day ahead of time. So I just want to wrap this up with the refinement stuff. It's about facilitating a successful event. How do you make things successful? And as you do this, you have to learn. And this is why I can't dump all this stuff on people when they work at them. Day one, they're like, what? So I kind of worked their way backwards, right? Where we are in the event, what it should be. And I worked myself back into the little things they can do to be more successful in that event. Because if I dump 149 pages and it really should be like 200, 500, 1,000 pages of stuff. Here, you need to know all this stuff. And this is what I tell you you need to know. They would just blow up, right? So, but as they get better, they understand this stuff. And it, it all becomes natural. Just like I said, you know, I'm waking up at 4.30 in the morning. My alarm's finally going off. I'm just getting into this cadence, right? And it just becomes natural that they do this on a regular basis and they don't even notice that they're doing it off to the side and the hands, you know. So anyway, it's probably distracting. But anyway, we'll close up because it's 5 a.m. Mesa Scrum. Try to stay within the 15 minutes of conversation. It is the Labor Day holiday. I hope you all have a good Labor Day holiday here in the States. I know offshore they, they do a holiday for Monday too. Hope you're enjoying your family, having some fun stuff. We're going to try to staycations this weekend, get some stuff done around the house, but also stretch it out and go see. I want to live in Philadelphia. There's all kinds of stuff to do. Try to see what's going on and um, have fun. Happy scrumming. Enjoy your weekend. I will be on again tomorrow, Sunday and Monday. Um, lots of stuff going on. You should see lots of content come up. I'm going to put my lo new logo on. I really originally want to do some kind of fancy thing, but I don't think I'm going to wait. I'm going to take what I have and uh, I have to touch one little graphic thing up 
and then I'll release it this weekend. Cool. You have an awesome day and happy scrumming and enjoy time with your family and your friends and enjoy. Bye.